Hello guys, welcome to another video in the series of coding. We are going to do the problem which is called maximum rows covered by columns. Let's try to take an example. We are given a binary matrix, means this matrix has only ones and zeros. They have given us one number called calls, which is a maximum number of columns that you can pick. Let's take an example. Let's say calls is equal to 4, right? This is the input value. So uh, the aim of the question is to find the maximum number of rows that we can cover. So let's try to understand what is the meaning of rows that can be covered. Let's say we pick these four columns, randomly just picking four columns to try to understand the question. So when we pick four columns, we are going to pick the entire values in these four columns, right? Uh, so in our example, we are picking this column, just randomly taking any four columns to try to understand what they are saying. Okay. Now let us, so uh, let us check the rows one by one now. So we have picked these four columns. These are our four columns which we have picked randomly. Now let us check the rows one by one. In the first row, have we covered all the ones? Let's see the first row. We have covered this one. We have covered this one. But this one is not covered, right? In the four columns that we picked, we were not able to cover this one. So this row is not covered fully. The row should be covered fully. Means all the ones in that row should be picked. But since we have picked only these four columns, we have missed out this one. That means this row is not covered. Okay. Let us check for the second row. Now in the second row, again, you can see that we are missing out some ones. So this row is also not covered. Let's check the third row. Third row also, we are missing out this one. So this row is also not covered. Okay, let us check the fourth row. Now in the fourth row, when you check, you see that there is no one that is being missed out. So this row is entirely covered because there is no one that is missing in the row which we have not selected, right? So all the ones are selected. So this row is covered. Now let us check this row. So the ones that were present in this row are all covered by the columns that we picked. There is no extra one. So this row is also selected. So if we pick these four columns, then we are going to select two rows. But is this the maximum answer? We don't know. How to find the maximum answer? There is no other way, but we have to try to select all columns one by one. And you, you have to try to see which is going to give you the maximum value. Okay, let's try to take an example. So what we are going to do, let me erase this. So we are going to start from the uh, first column, right? So see the maximum number of columns that you can select is four. So at the first column, there are two possible cases for us. Either you pick the first column or you don't pick the first column, right? That's it. So if you pick the first column, okay, let's say you pick the first column. If you pick the first column, the number of columns that you can select is only three. Now you are allowed to select only three remaining columns. If you don't pick the first column, then you can select any four columns after the first column and so on, right? So again, this this recursive calls will continue. Now you have the choice whether to pick the second column or not. So let's say you decide to pick the second column. This is one of the options that you have. If you pick the second column, you can only further select two columns. If you don't pick the second column, then you still have option to select three more columns and so on. So you can see that we can uh, write out a recursive approach. So the solution is very simple. Just start uh, listing down all the combinations, right? For example, maybe first pick this column next time don't pick this column maybe then pick this column then pick this column then maybe don't pick this column pick this column this is one of the valid combinations right so because you have only four columns so every time you have to pick only four columns so uh, using uh, the recursive approach just try picking the columns one by one and after picking each column just iterate over all the rows and try to find out which rows are covered whichever answer is giving you the maximum value that will be the answer let's try to code this then we will understand this better so i am uh, declaring a function i'm going to call it pick columns i'm going to pass uh, the matrix to this function i'm going to pass the number of columns to this function so let us define this function it is called pick columns and um, for now it is taking these parameters and we will keep adding parameters as we write the code. So what we are doing, we are starting from the first index, right? So the one more parameter that we can add is index. 
so this is the index of the column for which we have two options either to pick it or not to pick it so there are going to be two recursive calls okay so i'm going to write two recursive calls i'm again calling this function but why am i writing two recursive for calls one time i'm going to pick this column and one time I am going to not pick this column. I have just two simple options at every time, right? Either I pick the column or I don't pick the column. That's it. And I can continue to the next index and so on. So if I pick this column, what is going to happen? The number of columns, okay, that I have is going to get reduced. So let me write uh, one more variable, which is okay, one more variable, which is the number of columns that I have picked till now okay because I can never exceed 4 in our example the value of calls was equal to 4 so I can never exceed 4 I cannot pick more columns than 4 so I should keep a check of the number of columns that I have picked till now okay so I can maybe I can write it as current calls okay just to make this value simpler so initially we can start uh, this value with 0 so current calls let me pass it int current calls okay so when i am picking when i am picking the column i have to ensure that the current calls is always less than equal to calls okay uh, that means that uh, see like if i pick one column uh, the value of current calls will become one if i pick two columns the value of current calls will be two if I pick 3, it will become 3. If I pick 4, it will become 4. When it becomes 4, after this, I cannot increase the value of current calls. I cannot pick 5 columns, right? Because calls is the upper limit. I am allowed to pick only maximum 4 calls, right? So I should give this condition check. And now I can continue. So next time, we go to the next index. So from the current index, we go to the next index next time in the next function call. Okay. And current calls will also increase by 1. Okay. This is... Uh, this is the um, code. Okay. Now, um, let us, uh, this should be less than, not less than equal to because if I have already picked uh, four calls, then I cannot pick any further columns. Okay. Now, let us write the next part of code, which is if we are deciding not to pick this column, it is totally cool. It's not necessary to pick this column. We can uh, maybe get a better answer if we don't pick this column. Maybe by picking some other column, we will get a better answer. So in that case, you will do nothing. You will not increase the value of current calls. It will remain as such because you are not picking this column. But you can go forward to the next index and try to get a better answer. Okay. Now, what is the base condition? What will be the base condition is when you reach the index will be equal to matrix of 0 dot size that is you have reached the last value right if you have reached the end then you have to try to see which answer you are getting is maximum so you can just iterate over the entire matrix and one by one for each of the row you can check you can check if it is a one and if it is currently picked or not so what we can do is we need to also keep a visited vector which can tell us which column we have picked or not in this we are just counting and we are counting how many columns we are picking but we are not marking which columns we are picking so to mark the columns you can uh, keep a boolean vector integer vector anything just to mark the number of columns right so let me call it visited and it will be of the size of matrix of zero dot size so whenever we are picking a column we are going to mark it in the visited vector so i am going to pass this visited vector also now so vector bool and visited okay so whenever you are picking a column what you are going to do is you are also going to make it visited that means you are marking and telling that this is the column which i have picked so visited of index we are going to make it as true okay so this is the condition and when you come back right when you come back after this function call you can mark the visited again as false that means why are we marking it back as false so that see um, when we visit it we mark this column as true and we call this function when we backtrack we mark it as false so that for the next time when it goes into this function call we have to check all the cases we have to also consider case if we don't pick this column maybe we can get a better answer right without picking the column so we have to make it as false so that for the next recursive call we have this column as not picked okay 
so now let's continue now we were writing this base conditions in the base condition what we are going to do we are we are iterating over the matrix and now we have to check right you have to check if you have uh, the value of the cell as one so if matrix of i j is equal to one right that means <clears throat> this is the cell with a value of one now this should be covered so if it is covered then um, if it is covered by this column so we have to check if visited of j right so if visited of j is false that means you are not covering the cell this is not like this row is not covered because you did not pick this column so if you have not picked this column in the visited it will remain false so this is how you can check so the column is value is j uh, row value is i so if if the column value is false that means we did not pick this column so if we did not pick this column then what you can do you can declare a flag and you can mark it as false okay so initially what i will do here i will make a flag here i will mark it as true so if we are not covering this i can give a flag and i can mark it as false and i can break from here okay so what is the use of this is after this iteration is done i can just check if flags is still true that means we are covering all the cells because so here if flag is true that means this is the row which is entirely covered so here what we can do we can declare a variable count and we can increase our count so initially we can give count is equal to zero and if we are covering this row completely how do we know that because our flag will be true if we have covered this row completely we can increase the count so this row is fully covered so if this row is fully covered what we can do when we exit the for loop we can check with our final answer so we can take a variable answer and the answer will be the maximum of count and the answer currently stored and you can return from this function that's all this is the simple code now there is just one thing here we have not declared answer so let me do one thing let me declare here answer and here we can pass the variable answer to our function call okay now let us finally return answer in our main function call so this should work let's run and see if this is working so there is some compilation error here i forgotten to give j plus plus let me run and see again if it's working there's again some compilation error okay so here uh, i forgotten to give these parameters visited and answer because we added them later so let us quickly add these parameters here visited and answer and let me copy the same parameters here also so now let us run this code and see if it's working so it's working fine let's submit and see if it's working for all the test cases thank you for being patient and listening